What's up guys, BTBS here, and uh, this lava wall here is a little something I've been working on for a while. Well, not that long. Okay, so, I might as well say right now, the basis for this is sound griefing. It's going to be another method of sound griefing. Uh, this is not my original idea. I believe I got this original idea from another YouTuber. Uh, I can't remember the name. I will have to put an annotation up and link to his channel. But this is my interpretation of it. And it uses water and lava that don't touch but are close enough to hiss. So, uh... First off, let's just ignore all this redstone for now. Let's get rid of that. So this is what happens. I'm sure you can hear that right now. Ah, peace and quiet. So we have water here, suspended one block lower than the lava. Oh, oh sorry. Yeah, suspended one block lower than the lava. and uh, it's also one block further away so the lava is right here flows directly down the water is here flows to the side and then down currently it's been held back by these pistons and it's not making any noise right now because it only makes noise every so often so there you go it makes a little bit of noise but once it's settled into place it stops making noise probably for sound bug and frame rate issues but the main thing I like here is this little machine I've created which is an auto resetting five minute timer so just to show you how this works uh, this is the dispenser here, there's a pressure plate down there these blocks are to make sure that the dispenser drops its item directly on the pressure plate so you start it off with a button press or any other way you want, you could do a clock really doesn't matter so the button is pressed which sends power to this retracting all the pistons so it falls down but then here's the fun part it also sends power here to this inverter right now this inverter is powering this dispenser it won't do anything because the uh, dispensers only shoot once from a uh, single set of power and this one's already shot so when the item falls on the pressure plate it turns off this inverter here meaning there's no power going to the disp dispenser and here's how a five minute timer works uh, any item in the game within a loaded chunk will last for five minutes before it is automatically deleted so when you throw an item down like that it stays for exactly five minutes and then just vanishes so what a 5 minute timer does is it drops an item and uses that item to activate an effect like a wooden pressure plate and then after 5 minutes the item despawns. So when the item despawns this comes back, this goes off and this come here comes back on. When this comes back on it sends a pulse to here which then sends another item down there to reactivate that. So let's hook up the redstone quickly. There's going to be a bit of noise, let's just move away. Right, silence. Okay, so now let's watch our machine in action. Hit the button. Down comes an item. So this will be going on in the background. And as you can see, the closer you get, the louder it gets as well. And the best thing about these is they can be set from sky limit down to bedrock and they will work exactly the same way only they'll last for longer so say five minutes is up and these items despawn now what happens oh the water is now flowing down and it's been turned off again it's a beautiful sound in fact I'm just gonna improve this slightly here so leave a little bit of time here so item despawns new item comes out. Oh, let's have a little bit more la uh, weight in there. So, wait for it to stop. Okay, item despawns. 
the water has time to fully reach the bottom, almost. Let's just add one more. As you can tell, I'm still tinkering with this. <coughs> but the uh, great thing about these is, all you have to do is build a wall here, and this can be hidden behind any wall in any adventure map. Or even in a non-adventure map, it can be hidden so that you can have lava behind the walls to stop players getting through, but it's also a brilliant way of sound griefing. Now the interesting thing I think in this is the uh, underside. So I'm going to build a little above ground structure to show you how the underside works. So, right. So let's have a look. The water comes down one side. In fact, the lava comes down and lands in this trough. The water lands here. Now the key point of this is that underneath here, you dig this level out as well. Like so. And then the lava, in fact, if you dig it one block down as well, like this, a little bit better. So uh, the lava will come down here and want to flow that way. You can even then remove that block and the lava will not flow that way because it's already going down there and then you basically do the same thing again for the water or did I get that the wrong way around? give me a second uh, right, uh, let's just grab some water and lava so the water does this. Ah, yes, the lava needs to go first. Go on, water. Off you fuck. Good water. Leave us in peace. So the lava... Oh no, the lava actually needs to be caged. And then the water goes one block below it. And goes there. There you go, as you can see, they're touching, they're not making cobblestone or stone, because the water is set one block back, so it's the flowing part, and it never fully contacts the lava. The whole point is that they have to actually touch, so at one point would be occupying the same block. Uh, it has to be a possibility for them to actually make it. So when it's flowing like this, it goes straight down, and yeah, the water can hit the floor like this, and... Uh, you can even remove these blocks, but don't do that. Uh, always make sure your lava is down first, otherwise you get this little thing going on. So yeah, uh, fly your bastard. So it's a very simple design. So when the water comes down, it flows here, and then wants to flow this way, and then flows down and sits into this trough, and oh god, lava. And the simplicity of a five minute timer, I am actually experimenting with ways to make this better, I'm thinking an extremely long clock. In fact, give me one second guys. Okay guys, I have fine tuned it, it now has a clock active on it. With uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 repeaters set to full. And I actually inverted the clock at the end because I thought the best way to do it is cut the water off briefly and then it updates like this. And just as it stops updating, the clock activates and it starts again. Oh. These can also be used to generate lag if uh, anyone is interested. Any extremely vindictive map makers out there. Because all the particles, uh, as you might know, particles only actually happen when you're within 16 blocks of the uh, space that they would be happening. And all the particles can cause a major amount of lag. See, this is just one wall about 10 blocks high and 10 blocks wide. 
Could you imagine if it was a hundred blocks high and like five hundred blocks wide, encircling an area? You could crash someone's game. You could make a map that was only playable by the greatest machines on the planet. Anyway, guys, I'm rambling. Uh, so yeah, sound griefing. It's a, a new thing I'm kind of getting into. Peace.